it's a robot company. It's an energy storage company. Those uh, those are under Sam's purview. Uh, it is an artificial intelligence company. Tasha has done our work on uh, autonomous mobility, working with our AI uh, experts. Uh, and we think those technologies are converging. Sure, and I think what I say is that there's this secular shift happening in a cyclical industry. And I think that's the cause of a lot of confusion. And so what I mean by that is the secular shift is going from gas powered to electric, but all of that is happening in the auto industry, which is still cyclical. And so we're seeing that interest rates and what consumers can pay still impacts all vehicles, whether those are gas or electric. Uh, and we saw that, right, USR for March was 15 and a half million, which was lower than the 15.9 million consensus. But there's definitely been a particular pushback on electric vehicles. And so often we'll hear people saying that they're too expensive, uh, the range is too short, there's not enough charging infrastructure. And all of this is changing as battery costs come down, as infrastructure continues to be built out quite rapidly. And so what's giving us so much confidence that, you know, these quarterly numbers are just short term noise? Well, that's the fact that the Model Y was the best selling vehicle in the world. And we're putting up a chart now, which I'll, I'll walk through if you're just listening. Uh, but this essentially shows the price elasticity of demand for electric vehicles. So on the X axis, you have the inflation adjusted this is on the right hand. Yes, chart, on the right? on the right hand chart, and on the x axis mm -hmm. you have inflation adjusted U.S. dollars representing the uh, MSRP of a vehicle, and then on the y axis you have the addressable revenue share, and the Model Y is roughly you know fifty thousand dollars, and if you see that on the chart, that's you know roughly five to ten percent of the addressable market is available at those price points. So the fact that this was the best selling vehicle in the world and it's operating in such a small part of the overall market shows that consumers want affordable electric vehicles. And so when we see battery costs coming down over the next two to three years, when we hear that Tesla's you know, on the way to coming out with a low cost electric vehicle, where then the addressable market jumps up to the 50% plus uh, addressable revenue, that's opening up the market, you know, almost tenfold from where it was. So we think that these short term delivery numbers, it's almost a throwback to when the Model 3 was ramping. And uh, recently, Tesla has been um, releasing their full self driving FSD version 12 um, via over the air software updates to Tesla owners. Um, it's gone into wide release now. Um, Tesla has also started to give uh, any Tesla owner that has a, a capable vehicle access to one month free of FSD. Um, and importantly, uh, and so, so one, why is this update important? Why is FSD 12 important? Well, um, it's moving towards, you know, a single stack approach. Uh, we've heard Tesla say that it's eliminating over 300,000 lines of manually written C++ code. Um, so you can think of this as a less manually written, um, you know, AI architecture moving towards, you know, nothing but nets um, is the approach that that Elon, that, that's what Elon calls the approach. It's, it's a totally AI driven approach. You're not training the vehicle on what a stop sign is. It's actually learning that from just looking at um, many images and, and videos um, coming from customers cars. And so we've seen a lot of reports and Tesla has been augmenting these reports on Twitter. I highly suggest everyone go take a look at these videos. Um, the most dramatic improvement that we're seeing in this latest version of FSD is really on city streets. Um, and, uh, you know, I know personally for my Tesla, I use it um, here in New York City and in Connecticut. And I've noticed a really dramatic improvement again on those city streets that, you um, you know, previously the car was a lot more cautious. It's just becoming more human-like. Um, and ultimately we think that autonomous driving could be two thirds of the future enterprise value of Tesla. Neural nets. So what I'm gonna do over the next few weeks, now that I finally have this, 
is we're going to be, I'm going to go to all the places that I found some edge cases over the last six months. And we're going to be testing with neural nets. Um, you know, I've got railroad tracks, roundabouts, U-turns, highway lanes that were kind of funny, construction zones. So I'm going to be going to all these places over the next uh, few weeks. So stay tuned. But here we go. First drive, full neural net. This is an interesting area because it was an unmarked lane in the past. Um, what happened was FSD 11 would stay too far to the left here as we were going over this hill and I'd have to take over. Um, it's beautifully staying to the right so far. Wow. Okay. First test is a huge pass. That is impressive. That used to stay way too far over to the left. This was very, very nice off to the right on an unmarked road. So there's no way to know that this is actually a two, two lane road. Coming down here, this would be jerky sometimes. Way more smooth. Um, we've got cars coming to the left now. Let's see if it creeps out. We're gonna be heading right here. Still have three cars coming to the left. It's kind of creeping, but it's not doing that. Um, it's not doing that jerky thing that it does when it's trying to make a decision whether to go. It's kind of a slow, smooth creep out. Much smoother on that intersection there. Wow, very nice. Now we have a pedestrian here. I gotta be careful because there are people that come across this bike lane. Nobody here today, but that is something I'm gonna be coming back to to see if it picks up on, on people. Wow, so far, very impressive. We are in Cheyenne, Wyoming after a good night's sleep. Hopefully our Tesla V12.3 got some good sleep too. Looking to get some roads that are snow covered. So we'll have to get off of this road. <laughs> but we do have some slush. See how it does with the acceleration and braking. Um, see if we get any kind of different behavior to take the snow into account. So one thing I'm noticing right away is it's limiting the speed to 15 miles an hour yeah. so far. Now I jinxed it, <laughs> so it's going a little faster, but staying under 20. Uh, let's just like uh, send it through this area some more. Did that corner good, given the car coming on? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if it picks up on the camera, but it's crunchy because it's actually uh, icy underneath that layer of snow. Um, the auto wipers are going off, but there's nothing on the windshield. So we might need to go clean our camera, but it seems to be seeing things fine. Ooh, slide. It was a little slippery trying to accelerate, but like as soon as it lost traction, it, it uh, chilled out. Backed <laughs> off, yeah. I would say. We just got a new update on Tesla full self driving. We're on 12.3.3. Let's see if there's any big difference. Doing a shorter drive today. Just want to put it through its paces. We got a few multi lane roundabouts, highway entry and exit. Let's see how it goes. It's a nice aggressive move in front of the pickup truck, just what I would have done. Oh shoot, I thought it was gonna go that way. <laughs> this is actually the quicker way for our destination, but let's see how it goes. All right, we are back, trying this again to bring us on some tough roundabouts. Let's see if we can get on the highway here. Approaching our first roundabout here, we've got two lanes, so we wanna make sure it's hanging out in the right lane here, which is correct. Should be pushing through, not waiting for this car. And no problem again. As a reminder, full self-driving 11 really did not do a good job with roundabouts. It's moving a little bit slowly as we approach this entryway, so I'm giving it some accelerator. And now it's ramping up with no more need to touch the accelerator. It 
although we have a speed limit of 75, I would be ramping up a little bit more quickly here, accelerating onto the highway. No one's behind me, so I'll let it go and see. Yeah, it's kind of slowly getting up to a max of 85 now, which is correct. Okay, we're back, about to get off the highway here. We got a couple of roundabouts, uh, one after the other, so it'll be a nice little test for our self-driving here. As always, the vehicle will tell me that it's choosing the right fork, which is a nice addition. below the speed limit here, but not a big deal. It's